Well, Jack, all I can say is that Jack Kemp would be delighted to be here today to listen to what has been said, uh, especially the idea of being a warrior for people less powerful than one than than one is. Or Arthur Brooks said it better than I did. That's that's who Jack Kemp was. That's what Jack Kemp was all about. He was positive. He was optimistic. He believed in growth. Uh, he didn't believe that there were any limits to, to human uh, uh, imagination. So I've intervi interviewed a hundred people who knew Jack Kemp, um, thanks to Marcy, who got me this, um, this position and has, and has ch basically changed my life, um, uh, given me the opportunity to, to relive the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And by the way, I'm not stopping with just his congressional career. I'm going through HUD and, uh, and so on. Um, anyway, so um, th I, you all know what Jack Kemp was all about, and I've just sort of described what, what he was, and you know what his spirit was and how, uh, how he, he infused um, a po a positive growth politics, uh, uh, economics into, into, uh, into, into American politics. So the, the tentative title of the book that Fred Barnes and I are writing together is um, The Quarterback Who Saved the World. It's a little bit hyperbolic, but uh, that's, the way, that's the way you sell books. But it's not far off. If you, if you understand that Jack Kemp was the congressional originator of supply-side economics, and the one who converted Ronald Reagan to supply side economics. And Ronald Reagan and supply side economics changed America, reversed the 70s, the Malays decade, gave, restored America's morale, enabled expenditures on defense. That conquered the Soviet Union. Um, you, you can make a case, and I, we're, we will make the case that Jack Kemp had a heavy participation in saving the world from, from communism, transforming the world. Um, he, uh, he was also, as everybody knows, a bleeding heart conservative. He cared about people. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite lines that I can, I can never talk about Jack Kemp without ever mentioning is Newt, from Newt Gingrich that Jack Kemp showered with more African Americans than most Republicans have ever met, right? <laughs> Um, and he was, a, he, he was basically an opportunity person. He believed, he believed that there were no limits and should be no limits to the opportunities that, that people should have. He was a conservative. He wanted to limit government, but more than limiting government, he wanted to um, cut taxes, and he, and he did. I mean, he and Ronald Reagan cut the top rate from 70% when Reagan arrived to 28% when um, when, when Reagan left. And it created the boom that lasted from um, 1982, when the, when the Volcker recession ended, to all the way, in, all the way through the, 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 the Clinton uh, era. So um, what, what I kind of, and, and one, of, one of his great statements was that a, a political party should not be about defeating the other political party. It should be about developing ideas that will change the country and persuade people to join. Um, it's too bad, it's just too bad that it only people who agree with that idea were here today. Uh, it's too bad that members of Congress were not here. Uh, because, unfortunately, that's not where the Republican Party is, and it's certainly not where the Democratic Party is. What Fred and I hope this book will do is to remind the, the people who are in power and the people who vote for them how much better it could be through the life of, of Jack Kemp as, as, the, as the model. Um, and, uh, you know, somehow, Somehow they've got to get off the business of, of hyperpartisanship, and they've got to start working on solving America's problems. Um, we're in a situation right now which is a lot like, psychologically, a lot like the 1970s. Um, the American dream is in trouble. Major, close to a majority of the American people think 
that hard work um, and enterprise will not get you ahead, that the system is rigged, um, that, that uh, it's all rigged in favor of the rich, uh, that, um, that, um, that their children will not live a better life than, they, than they're living, uh, successive, that, that some, something's gone wrong in America. And I think that something's gone wrong in America. Half of the population, the people who watch Fox News and are, you know, are um, um, enraged every day at Barack Obama, um, all believe that, uh, that America is not what it used to be because people are getting stuff that they don't deserve. Uh, and then you have other people who are watching MSNBC and they're enraged at the, at the other people because they're trying to take away the pittances that, the, that, is, that are provided to the poor people of America and the country is going in, in opposite directions. And I think we're, we're developing a system. I don't know how to, put, how to put, put it back together again. I just hope that, that this book will tell people that there were bipartisan politicians Jack Kemp worked with a lot of Democrats, um, and he and he worked and he never attacked anybody, uh, even when he was supposed to attack people like Bill Clinton. He couldn't bring himself to do it um, when he was running for vice president. Um, so you know, and I think that that what we've discussed today is what the parties need to hear. Um, you know, I think that, that, the, that the fundamental basis of the doubts about the American dream is the fact that incomes are flat, uh, health care costs are rising, education costs are rising, people find it more and more difficult to, to, to make a life for themselves. Um, uh, they, and, you know, half of them blame the government and half of them uh, blame the Republicans for trying to take to take things away, and, they, and, they're, and, they're, and they're polarized on that account. Um, and I think globalization has, virtuous as it's been for the world, has had its ill effects on, on America. The only answer, I mean, I think the fundamental answer, besides getting rid of regulation and tax reform and all of that, is to improve our education system. And as my wife pointed out, here we have a situation where the Common Core standards. So I mean, Republicans had always argued. You know, uh, Bill Bennett always argued for higher standards, more accountability, uh, testing, rewarding quality, and uh, and in in, in education re rewarding results. And that's exactly what the Common Core was all about to raise the. And it was and it was invented by the governors of the states. It was not invented by Barack Obama. And now you have an unholy alliance between the teachers unions and the Tea Party. And I'm sorry she's not here, Peggy Noonan, to demolish the Common Core as though you know it's some sort of uh, uh, federal takeover of American education. It is nothing of the kind. It's going to be state run. Anyway, so education, tax reform, uh, regulatory reform, all of those things uh, what the Republican Party needs, what the Democratic Party needs, is a new agenda to bring back the American dream. I think we've, you've all talked about it today, and I, and I just wish that all the Republican and Democratic presidential candidates were here to hear you, because I think you opened a vistas of, of change that most of them haven't even occurred to. Now, I, I have... Jack Kemp on my Google alerts, right? You'd think Jack Kemp was alive and running for president uh, at the moment because he comes up on Google alerts all the time because people are trying to identify themselves as Jack Kemp Republicans. I think they, as Bill Crystal said, uh, what they're doing is, is they're trying to put on a costume. And a few of them are trying to investigate, well, what does it really mean to be a Jack Kemp Republican? The Republican Party corporately is 100 miles from being Jack Kemp. And it's got a long way to go, and Arthur Brooks described why, right? There is not, there is not empathy, there is not caring, there is not um, uh, the, the, uh, um, the, the willingness to depart from the, from the, from the, the benefits uh, according to the base or the prejudices of the base 
in order to reach out and solve uh, the problems of the average American uh, in the Republican Party, at least as I see it. So in any event, I think this has been a great beginning, and I hope that the message of this day uh, will get widely trans transmitted to the people who want to be president of the United States because we desperately need better presidential leadership than we've, than we've had. Um, Jack Kemp said that uh, you, you know, you've, got to, you've got to find a, a be better answers to the problems of America. I think better answers to the problems of America have been discussed today, and I hope, I hope the, the people who are in a position to change America will listen to what you've all said. So thank you very much.